friends, I'd like to thank the organizers for having this meeting. Um, it is necessary, it is important for us to gather, to express our anguish, our anger, and also find ways of addressing the issues at hand. The speakers before me have spoken about the specifics of the case in Kolkata. Uh, Poonam has talked about the broader issues, the legal issues, the need for fighting uh, at the legal as well as uh, in other uh, spheres. But what I thought I would talk about is what is rape and why does it occur? What is the meaning of rape culture? Why is there a rape culture? How is it perpetuated? Because the laws can be there. People are clamoring right now, even in Kolkata, they've said that we'll make the laws even more stringent. We have these fast track codes, we'll have the death penalty. But as was pointed out by Poonam, we know that what will happen as a result of all this is that only the disprivileged are going to be affected by this kind of so called fast track justice. <coughs> the real perpetrators are all around us. And how do we address? this issue. I think men and women and those who identify with other genders, we are all very, very concerned because we see the way in which in our everyday life, there is a rape culture all around us. What do we mean when we say a rape culture? It means that there is a societal uh, uh, value system that allows rape to be accepted, allow the rape to even flourish as some kind of retribution, as some kind of a punishment, as some kind of assertion of power. It is structural violence as was pointed out um, uh, earlier. That structural violence is justified in many, many ways when we look at the way in which rape culture is circulated or is, is given a space in societies. When uh, in your poster, in your uh, handout, you have referred to uh, Mohan Bhagwat saying that rapes happen only in India and not in Bharat. Presumably what he means is that traditional India is one where we do not see rape. Right? That it is something that is there only in modern India. Those who embrace modernity, the women who are out there, who are modern, they are the ones who invite rape. So this idea that rape is invited by women is something that is very common. It is something that we see all around us. You see a woman with short hair. You see a woman, woman wearing clothes where her arms can be seen or her legs can be seen. You see a woman smoking or drinking. You assume that she's asking for it. There is this understanding that <coughs> there are certain types of women. And this kind of woman falls in that bracket <coughs> where she's inviting the attention of men and also then if rape happens, she's invited, she's asked for it. Now this is not something that is very new. When we look at pre-modern traditions, how was the idea of the ideal woman, the good woman, the Kulastri, the Pativrata, how was it presented, how was it um, you know, um, uh, circulated as an idea? Myths were used, legends were used, stories about these great women who were these perfect women who did everything, who effaced themselves for the sake of the men in their family, the, their husbands, their sons and so on. That is the kind of culture then that is presented to these men. And the very interesting thing is that these women even if they had to offer sexual favors to other men, if the men under whose control they were, that is as Manu says very famously, 
when she is a kumari she is under the protection of her father so pita rakshati kumari and then when she is in her youth then it is her husband who protects her and then later it is her son who protects her and then he ends this verse with the statement a woman cannot be independent she cannot stand all alone by herself so this is the kind of mindset this is the kind of hegemonic idea that is presented that is perpetuated and there are number of myths that are then created and circulated through which such ideas are accepted a uh, real with self is something that we may not find so often but you will be surprised at actually how often it appears in <coughs> even the epic the great epics like mahabharat and ramayana there's so many instances it's just that we don't pay attention to the way in which the idea of rape is presented for instance in the depiction of the other so you know the always this other the men out there that community is going to come and take our women that mentality that is projected the other in the mahabharat in the uttarakhand there is a reference to ravan the story of ravan and we are told that ravan is this other he is a rakshas and he goes around raping women all over the place and then he is cursed because of this that he is going to um, uh, be killed because of his lust for another woman so you know that so the way in which there is an othering there is a way in which the other community that is going to attack your women is being presented so the justification for protection of our women even today i remember we had a seminar uh, on uh, uh, war um, and conflict zones and uh, the media and uh, somebody who was from a certain part of india um, when a woman journalist from that region was talking about the rape of women which are not just by the armed forces but also by other sections of society he immediately said no we protect our women this gentleman said no we protect our women we don't do anything to our women whatever happens to our <coughs> women is because of the other right so this whole idea of othering and therefore the need for protection of ours is something that is projected through so much of the myths the other thing that comes up is victim blaming and so when we talk of patriarchy and patriarchal ideology we need to understand how that patriarchal ideology is actually able to sustain itself over millennia and one of the ways in which it is able to do this is by presenting these notions of chastity of being under the protection of a man for a woman and also then that the woman must definitely have done something wrong which is why you have such a thing happening again from the mahabharat in the uh, story in um, i'm sorry i said mahabharat from the ramayan in the uttarakhand uh, where you have uh, this particular um, instance in a hermitage there's this young beautiful girl apparently and a king comes over there and uh, he's so uh, overtaken by excitement so this is again a very interesting thing men are excited they are aroused hmm? and therefore women have to be locked up women have to be kept under control and uh, you know that they should not be visible you cover their heads you cover their body you don't allow them to go out you have a lakshman rekha that is drawn around them in all these ways then we are protecting the women and men of course do not need to be told that stop being so excited it's natural for men to be excited even the buddha says when women come to him and say that we want to enter the sangha as renunciates we want to become bhikkhuni he says that no 
you can't allow them and then finally he, re he refuses several times and then finally he agrees just before that he's asked why did you refuse and he says if women come in then the life of the sangha is going to get hard why because the men won't be able to concentrate so this very uh, you know these very interesting ways in which a societal mindset is produced <coughs> where it is acceptable, it is justified for men to go and uh, express their desire to this and force themselves on women. Uh, and uh, here then the idea of who are these women, especially when we look at early uh, mythology and you know we find them being reiterated now in television series, one after the other you have newer versions of them. Um, each as bad as the other uh, with new twists also that are being brought in but which actually in that twisting are actually inventing new ways of, um, of presenting control over um, women and other sections of society that are disprivileged. The uh, issue of virginity is something that is often brought up when we talk about uh, women and uh, you know their uh, need for protection. Uh, Manu says that the biggest punishment should be for those who rape virgins. And this reminds me when I was reading this uh, many years ago, it reminded me of a lovely article by this historian called Sherry Ortner, where she talks of virginity and the state. Why the state is so concerned? about virginity. From the Mesopotamian times, from the laws of Hammurabi to our own times, the idea that you need to uh, control the virginity, you need to ensure that women's virginity is protected, is something that uh, we find. And the reason that uh, Osna talks of is the way in which this is uh, also to do with maintaining social hierarchies and the power structure. So women from a certain class, caste, uh, position, group cannot be allowed to have a relationship with men from another class, caste, group, uh, those who are lower than them. And it is in that context that Manu is very uh, uh, categorical that we cannot have, for instance, a Shudra man who is uh, having <coughs> relations with a woman from the upper caste, especially one who is a virgin. Hmm? So the, this uh, really takes us to this point that then we are talking about uh, tradition, when we are talking about the way in which idea, cultural myth get uh, propagated in society, what it does is it normalizes this kind of structural violence. It makes us accept that it's fine, it's all right, uh, and it also then leads to what we saw uh, two days ago perhaps when the uh, uh, people who were accused of the gang rape of a student uh, in IIT uh, Banaras when they were released, they are being welcomed with garlands. And this has happened in so many other cases as well. So again, you know, that they are our people, uh, that we need to you know, protect these men, and that the women are ones who are not at all of concern in this. So it's very much a patriarchal, patrilineal uh, mindset, a patrifocal um, structure where the whole idea is to see how to uh, ensure that the power structure which privileges men stays as it is and that even if it means that the dignity of women, as uh, Simone de Boava said, they are rendered the second sex and um, that world historic defeat that, we, uh, that Engels talks of, uh, uh, of uh, women uh, once you have the beginning of the idea of property, it's not just about the economic 
aspects of it there is an ideological aspect and unless we unravel that ideological aspect we are not going to be able to tackle the issue of rape we are certainly not going to be able to dismantle rape culture which has become so widespread so common and even in those areas where you may have had alternate traditions different ways of looking at uh, uh, you know gendered uh, identities even in those areas today because of the uh, circulation uh, of uh, media uh, because of the way in which social media has been able to reach <coughs> into such diverse areas you find very similar iterations of the um, of the rape culture that we find in normative uh, traditions within uh, the mainstream of the subcontinent thank you